Today we're going to be proving the arc of hyperbolic of secant of x is equal to the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by x, with x's range being between 0 and 1. For starters, we know the definition of this hyperbolic of secant of x to be equal to 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x, the hyperbolic of secant of x being equal to 1 over the arc, or not arc, the hyperbolic of cosine of x. These two terms are congruent to one another which I'm going to set to be equal to a. By definition, we can find the variable of x to be equal to the arc of hyperbolic of secant of a. This will come important later on in this proof. From here, we're going to analyze 2 over e to the x plus e to the negative x is equal to a. We're going to analyze this equation. And we're going to set e to the x to be equal to n. So, we substitute to get 2 over n plus 1 over n is equal to a. We can combine the denominator the denominator to get 2 over n squared plus 1 divided by n is equal to a, which is also equal to 2n over n squared plus 1. We can multiply n squared plus 1 on both sides to get a times parentheses n squared plus 1 is equal to 2n, which is equal to a n squared plus n, plus a rather which we can subtract 2n on both sides to get a n squared plus a minus 2n is equal to 0. If I rewrite it to get a n squared minus 2n plus a is equal to 0. Now, why did I rewrite it? Because I wanted to write it in the form of a quadratic equation, which is in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, with our variable in this case being the variable of n. With the quadratic equation comes the quadratic formula which we can use to solve for the variable of x, in our case, the variable of n, to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And with this, we must define the a values, the b value, and the c value for our quadratic equation right here. The a value in this case will be equal to a, the b value in this case will be two, negative 2, the coefficient of n, and c will be equal to a. And these will be our uh, terms for the variables to substitute into the quadratic equation. So n will be equal to negative b, 2, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 4, minus 4 times a times a, which is equal to 4a squared, divided by 2 times a, which is 2a. This can be simplified further into 2 plus minus the square root of a squared, negative a squared, plus 1, times 2, divided by 2a. All I did here was factor out the square root of 4 from the square root of 4 minus 4a squared. This is equal to 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus a squared divided by a, which is equal to the variable of n. Remember, e to the x is equal to n. This was a previous assumption in the proof. Therefore, n is equal to e to the x once again. We can find the value the value of x, therefore, from the natural log of 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus a squared over a. Now remember earlier in the proof once more that x, that x is equal to the arc of hyperbolic of secant of a. Therefore, we can resubstitute it back into this variable of x to be equal to the arc of hyperbolic of secant of a. And before we finish off this proof, we must argue whether we take the plus or negative sign and the restriction of a. To do this, let us compare the values of 1 and the square root of 1 minus a squared. Which value will be bigger? Well, the answer to your question will be 1 is greater than the square root of 1 minus a squared. The reason for this is 1 minus a squared by itself. If we compare 1 minus a squared to 1, 1 minus 1 minus a squared by itself is already less than 1. Take the square root of it, and it will be even less than 1 as 1 minus a squared is. Therefore, we can be sure that 1 is indeed greater than the square root of 1 minus a squared. Therefore, we must ar argue the second point of this proof, which is e to the x's condition being always greater than 0, with x with x's range being all real numbers. The reason for this? Let us take an example when x is a positive integer, such as when x is equal to 5, and we take a negative integer when x is equal to negative 10, 
and once we take let's say a fraction x is equal to 1 over 16 and just for fun let us take x is equal to some uh, natural number such as pi when x is equal to 5 this will be e to the fifth e to the fifth will always be greater than zero e to any positive integer or decimal will always be greater than zero e to the negative tenth power will be equal to 1 over e to the tenth power which will be extremely small but still greater than zero x is equal to 1 over 16 well that's just simply taking the square the 16th root of e the 16th root of e will still be greater than zero because if it's less than zero or equal to zero it won't make sense when x is equal to pi e raised to the pi power it will still be greater than zero because pi is 3.1415 3.1415 uh nine two six which is still a positive decimal hence e to raised to a positive decimal will still be greater than zero so we have proved e to the x will always be greater than zero therefore if one is to subtract to subtract the square root of one minus a squared it will result in a negative value divided by another positive value to get a total outcome of a negative value so this does not equal to one plus minus we can only take we can only take the plus symbol because if it's negative then the resulting outcome of this natural log will be negative and that won't be right and now we must argue for a's range what will be a's range for this natural log well a will be less than one why is a less than one let us take a for example a is equal to three when a is equal to three this will be one plus the square root of one minus nine divided by three regardless of what this of what this totals to in complex form all we care about is is the square root of one minus nine going to give us a real outcome which it won't because one minus nine is a negative number we cannot square negative we cannot square root rather we cannot square root negative quantities therefore if a is greater than one we can take another value a is equal to 100 or a is equal to 1000 how big or how small you want it to be that's greater than one it'll always be smaller why because a squared is always greater than one that is if a is greater than one if a is greater than one then a squared will always be greater than one so we have to be less than one in order for this to make sense because if it's less than one then we have a chance of making this true and since i ran out of the room here i'm gonna scroll over and rewrite this natural log which we previously proved to be a plus the square root of one minus a squared divided by a if a is less than one this is one of the proofs or one of the restrictions rather for a let us take a value that's less than one such as negative three negative three is less than one but what do we get when a is equal to negative three well this will become the natural log of negative three plus the square root of one minus negative three squared divided by negative three what is the square roots number is a positive or is a negative it's negative because one minus nine is a negative eight negative eight is indeed a negative square root and this will not make sense so we have found out that well there's a certain range that a could be if it's less than one so let's go up let's go to a is equal to negative one what is it when a is equal to negative one well this becomes the natural log of negative one plus the square root of one minus the negative one square divided by negative one looks pretty good the square root is not negative but what is the square root outcome the square root is equal to the square root of zero and the square root of zero does not have meaning just like how one divided by zero would have will not have meaning so this will not make sense either so we realize that we cannot go further below negative one nor can we go above positive one so a has to be between negative one and well, what what is it going to be a then that's greater to it has to be greater than zero and why is it greater than zero because any number such as negative 0 0.999 will still result in a quantity that's going to be negative if it's negative any negative value will result in this natural log to be incorrect because the natural log of any number cannot be negative so we cannot have negative values at all whether that be negative thousand or negative 0.001 so it has to be between 0 and negative 1, hence proving this formula of 
the arc of hyperbolic of secant of x is equal to the natural log of 1 plus the square root of 1 minus x squared divided by x with x's range being between 0 and 1.